Hello, my name is Guy Wolf. I'm an actor and theatre maker from London. Now, I first heard this story that I'm about to tell you when I was a kid and I went to the Jewish Museum in Camden with my dad and my brother. And we were shocked by the content of this story because it was so much like our own family history. In our family, years and years ago, there was a butcher and he lived in the East End of London. He had his own butcher's shop and his windows used to get smashed in by people that hated Jewish people. And he went so far as to change his own surname to sound less Jewish because of the hate that he received. So this story has a big personal significance, but I also think it's a bigger message is really interesting and important for us to learn as well. The first question really is about where hate comes from. And I think this story tells us that hate is something that we learn it's not something that we're born with. And the second thing that I take away from this is that you are smarter than your bullies. So people that have hate and racism in their hearts, that says more about them than it does about the people that they hate. There must be a reason for that hate and why they've learned it. There's something sad about them, something they feel they're lacking as a person, and ultimately this story tells us that you are bigger and smarter than the people that have hate in their hearts. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Once upon a time, in a far-flung, forgotten land known as the East End of London, there lived a butcher called Wolfie. And one day Wolfie was serving some customers when all of a sudden, Smash! Wolfie panicked, looking outside his shattered shop window to see three boys laughing, pointing and making horns with their fingers. He ran outside. What are you boys doing to my shop window? <laughs> we hate Jewish shops, said one of the boys. We smash Jewish shops and we'll smash yours too, every single day. Jew! And they ran off, laughing and cavorting at the chaos they'd caused. Wolfie sat, surrounded by shards. He wanted to cry. That night, Wolfie was having dinner with his wife, Deborah, and their daughter, Rivka. I don't understand it, cried Wolfie. They come to my shop and they smash my window. They say they hate our people, but they are only boys. There. Where does such reckless hate come from? And Deborah replied, Talk to them, Wolfie. Try to understand. The next day, Wolfie was in his shop and the same thing happened. The three boys turned up and smash! <laughs> the rock went straight through the window. This time, Wolfie would try to understand. He went outside. Boys, why would you do this to a family man like me? We told you, we don't like Jews. Yeah, yeah Jews have horns and all the money. Wolfie thought for a moment. What is a Jew? The boys paused. Have you ever met a Jew? The boys paused. Do I have horns? They paused again, unsure what to say. Do you really think I have all the money? Do you think I would be working in this shop every single hour God gives me if I had all the money? Do you think I would have traveled across the seas with my daughter wrapped in a towel through the night through very many dangers to come to this land if I had all the money. Then the boy with the biggest rock and the strongest arm and the most stubborn of them all said, well, my dad says Jews can't be trusted, so I don't trust you 
or your silly story. And with that, he got his rock, threw it straight past Wolfie's head and smash! That night, Wolfie was having dinner with his family again. Now I understand. These boys, they don't hate. But their fathers hate. And they learn to hate. And Rivka, the nine-year-old daughter, tugged his sleeve and said, Daddy, you're smarter than the bullies. When I'm being bullied at school, I use my brain to beat them. Use your brain, Daddy. So the next day, when the three boys came marching up to the shop, rocks in hand, Wolfie said, Boys, boys, I'm so glad to see you. Here is three shillings. Please throw your rocks at my window. The boys were confused. You're going to pay us to throw rocks at your window. That's right, boys. Okay, then. So the boys picked up their rocks and smashed. The window came crashing down. The boys danced away while Wolfie reglassed. The next day, the boys came back. Boys, boys, I'm so glad to see you. Today, I only have two shillings, but please throw your rocks at my window. The boys got their rocks and smash! The window came crashing down. The boys danced away, squawking and squealing while Wolfie reglassed. The next day, the boys came back. Boys, boys, I'm so glad to see you. Today, I only have one shilling, but please throw your rocks at my window. The boys got their rocks and smashed. The window came crashing down. The boys danced away with their shilling while Wolfie reglassed. The next day, the boys came back. Boys, boys, I have bad news. I have no more money to pay you to throw rocks at my window, but please throw your rocks at my window. Wait a minute. You ain't going to pay us to throw rocks at your window no more. Forget that. And off the boys went, swearing they would never return to throw rocks at the window where the man with no horns would no longer pay. And they never did. <laughs>